Cal, how significant was it when Nick was able to give you guys, especially oh. defensively, and pick and roll? Oh. A bad ankle with no little practice. Oh, it was unbelievable. Uh, can I just tell you why I'm, I'm just so happy? He really helped himself. Um, because he's in the best shape of his life, he has confidence. He built his own confidence. If you're not in shape and you're getting pushed and you're late, you will have no confidence. You'll miss a couple shots, your head will go down, and you're done. He's got two things. Every time on offense and defense, outrun the ball, wherever it is, outrun it. You ready for this? And play every shot, both on offense and defense, as though it's going to be missed. And then we will watch him in the NBA be the next guy to go off the charts. If I told you just those two things, and I've been wrong before, 1978. And the only way you can do what I just said is be in great condition. And he is for the first time in his life. What was your internal or external reaction when he chased Cassius Winston off that screen out of bounds, forced the tournament? It's not an easy thing for a seven foot guy to do. No, he was great. I mean, when I watched it, he came up and he moved. He got back to his own man. The people behind scrambled. And, you know, what's crazy with this, you know, everybody's talking about how we defend him. You all know we do no defense in the yeah. summer. None. We're not in the stands. We're not working on pick and roll. We're doing no defense. We're not doing any defense until we do our first practice. Now, we're teaching the dribble drive, which means they have to be able to stay in front of somebody, but nothing else. And the reason is our season's too long. Do you really want to play defense for 10 months? Who wants to do that? Bad enough, they got to do it for six months. And so his veteran mentality helped him, but he was good. He was really good. He, he faded away on some little jump hooks. You know, think about if he made like three or four of those or got fouled and goes back to the line. Maybe. I mean, people, who's better than him? But he's coming off that injury, and he's still feeling his way through, but proud of him. How does it help when you're playing a bunch of low and mid major teams to have a guy in your locker room who played for one of those programs to kind of tell his teammates what to expect from those guys and what it means to them? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that'll be the case, but look, we're, uh, we're coming off a game where People that watch said, did you see their energy? Did you see their spirit? Did you see how hard they play? Well, just be that team. Now, we got to do the same in this game. Now, this is a hard game because this team's pressing for 40 minutes. They're going to scramble and do stuff that this team has not seen. <laughs> when we played uh, Kentucky State, just so you know, they were supposed to play man because we don't work on zone. <laughs> and they came out in a 2-3 zone for 40 minutes. And if you think we look confused, we were confused. Because <laughs> we had not worked on zone, so we talked them through zone up. You imagine that? And that's what we had to do. Well, yesterday was more of a film day, so today I've got to work on how we're going to attack the press. And you got young guys. So uh, this will be a good game for us. They got some size. Um, you know, the big kid that uh, transferred in, uh, I think from NC State, I believe he was. Um, he's good. I watched them. Their guard play. They shoot threes. Um, so this 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 is a good one for us. Well, yeah. Given the makeup of the team, do you feel like they'll be naturally focused on Friday, or don't you know. gonna, you're going to have idea. to get on? When, you, when you're coaching young guys, you don't know. One of the things that we have to do, we have to continue to figure out offensively how do we play, how do we get everybody involved in how we play. Um, like when someone wants to do more, I won't, you know, I can do more. You know what my comment? We didn't score one basket on an offensive rebound. How about do more of that? Go get a couple of those. Doing more for some of these guys means that we're going to have to create a little bit for them because they're not used to playing random. When you're a freshman, everything was run to you. You took every shot, you, every play was to you in high school. Now you're here and we're trying to play random. Um, 
why am I trying to teach them random basketball? It's where the game's going. Where it was positionless, dribble drive, it is, the game is random now. Well, when you have 17 and 18 year olds, they're not used to playing random. And you watch them and you say, he's a little lost out there. He is, because he's not used to being ready to make a play before he catches the ball. He's not seeing what's there before he catches it. A high school player catches the ball and then says, what do I have? It is too late. And so we're still not going to be till January, February to where we can play as random as we want to play. John, because uh, Nate is a little older, what do you think about considering him like a player coach in a sense on the floor? He can coach. He can coach the team. I won't go. As long as they pay me, I'm good. Man. No, but seriously, I mean, I would think his voice is listening. I'll tell you what was crazy on the bench. Riley was all was all into it, talking screens and, uh, you know, and I'm going to talk to them a little bit about it today. You know, what, uh, you're on the bench. What are you, cool? Well, Riley was into it. Like, he was talking as a basketball player. We try to have X amount of what we call kills, which are three stops in a row. You have three stops in a row, that's one kill. So it's two stops, and there you got Riley, and, and, and when you had Nate on the bench, you had two of them. That's two, that's two stops, one more we gotta kill, one more we gotta kill. That's what you want on your bench and your team. But he's been, Nate's been good. I, I mean, the, the great story I said yesterday, I called the coaches at Bucknell and thanked them and said, you did a great job with this kid, really did. And they said, after their game with Fairfield, they were on the bus watching our game, and when he made that three, the bus had to pull over because they were going absolutely bonkers on the bus, which, you know, that's the kind of stuff that makes this great. Um, like his dad, he, he said, how were your parents? They came up to him after, like, holy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, what's better than that? I mean, seriously. And, I, and I'm saying that you guys haven't been in practice with, with you and know what's going on anyway, but you would have seen that Tyrese has not done that, what he did up there, not one day in practice. Not one day. As a matter of fact, I've been all over him. If you ask who I've been the toughest on, they will tell you him in the second place is Khalil. But he's the one. But part of it is he has to go against Ashton. My son and I were talking today, and he said, he was talking about Ashton. He said, there's no one like him. You don't realize until you play against him, you can't even make a bounce. Ask Johnny Juzang. When that kid switches on Johnny, Johnny says, here, take it. <laughs> and so he has to go against Ashton, and then he started driving. Like, Holy cow, I can drive. Like, I can get a shot off. Like that shot, that deep one he had. Ashton would have been to where his head would have been hitting the kid's chin. I mean, it's, so it's been a great thing. And it's been great for Ashton, playing against somebody that good. Yeah, somebody mentioned that after Maxie's big shot, the long one at the end, that Ashton actually picked up the guy and, and denied the ball and forced the time out there. Is that kind of the, the mindset and the mentality he Yeah, had? but, and here's the thing. I told them yesterday, because this is what happened when you're coaching a team and they're all talented kids. All the clutter around them. Like, I told them the night before the game and I told them before the game. If anybody gets it going, we're riding them. You had known me, if you follow me, you know that's how I am. If someone gets it going, they're going to have the ball in their hands. And the rest of you got to accept it. Well, you, who was it in this game? I told Ashton. He was playing so good, I pushed you to the wing. What's the big deal? We got 40 games. <clears throat> but there'll be the comment, well, if he so and so did his, could, why didn't he play them like, because you're not him. That's why. But he's not you. I pointed to Emmanuel and Ashton yesterday and said, they may be the same size, they may look the same. They are totally two different players. And what this kid can do, maybe you can't do. But he can't do what you do. That's the great thing about how we do this here. You come in and be yourself. Unless 
well, if you were doing what he was doing, if I was doing what I was doing, and he was doing, we, that's one of those, the maturity of it, <coughs> and understanding. So, you know, we got a great, I, I told him yesterday, I love walking into practice every day. We got great kids. They're still somewhat fragile, trying to figure out who they are. Um, I want to do more. I know you had three turnovers doing more. Probably need to do less. <laughs> so this is all part of the process of teaching. And, and then there's got to be trust. Like I told him, we coach every guy on this team like they're starters. Everyone is coached like a starter. No one is being held back. We are trying to push you to be special. We can't get in shape for you. We can't be tough for you. We can put you in situations for you to make the plays that we're showing. But if you've got to cross twice, spin, and go, and then lose the ball, you're not playing the way we want you to play. I want you to score, but score like this. It's more efficient. It's, it's where you're going to have to take things. That's the process of what we go through. Kyle, Kyle, what, Kyle, what point in that, within that game did you start to go, okay, let's put the ball in Tyrese's hands and, and <coughs> play with him? Um, I can't remember, but you won't believe this. I'm just watching the game and like, holy jeez, did you see that? Put it in his hand again. Let's go side pick and roll. Let's see what he'll do. Let's put him in a fist five and let's see what he'll do. So it was just when he got rolling. Yeah, 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 you, just, you see it and you go. It's like Malik Monk running down the court and making a three and me running in front. Drive it, drive it, make the three. Good shot. <laughs> I mean, it's you just, you're playing it. If we can get... Nick in the post and he scores three or four, guess what? We're throwing it to him ten straight times. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. If you're a wing, we're, you know, we're throwing it to you. If you've got an advantage and you can make plays, you know. But, again, this is – we're still figuring out offensively. I'm going to do some different things today to try to help a couple guys. I just don't want this to be too structured offensively. And then what I saw defensively for this early – this is my 11th year. I'm not sure if there's a, a couple teams that were better defensively at this point than we were yet that game. I don't, I mean, do you remember where we were playing teams and Transy's right there with us and man, we like, if we're gonna be defensive, bet, like maybe not this team, maybe he should play zone. Coach Hall's in practice tell me, I'm telling you to one, three, one, listen to me. What Cal, speaking of, last uh, one. Cal, speaking of uh, Emmanuel, I saw on his Instagram he had a, a brace on his on his wrist. Can you comment on that? Is he doing okay? He's got to shoot it, Lester. He just keeps shooting. <laughs> 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 <laughs>